Hi, this is Eddie, and today's video is going to go over the RPM mode for the HP Prime. Setting RPM Entry Mode. From the Home screen, press Shift Home to get to the Home Settings screen. Select RPM for Entry and press the Home key again. This is RPM Mode, short for Reverse Polish Notation. Entering Numbers and Arithmetic. To enter numbers, all you have to do is enter the number and press the Enter key. Pressing the Enter key will put the number on what's called the stack. You can have as many numbers or objects on the stack as you want. Each of the arithmetic functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers, will require two objects or two numbers from the stack. For example, if I want to add 45 plus 63, I input 45, enter 63 plus and my sum is 108. If I want to multiply 3 times 6, I can enter 3, press enter, 6, and then times, and I get my answer 18. You can use what's on the stack to create chain operations and use the immediate results. So for example, if I want to subtract 18 from 108, all I have to do is press the subtraction sign, and I get 90. For powers, I want the base first, then the exponent. For example, if I want to take 6 to the 4th power, I would do 6, enter, 4, and then this x to the y key, and I get the answer 1,296. Basic stack operations. If I want to drop the first stack, I'm going to press the delete key. That will erase the contents of whatever is on the first stack level and bring everything else down one stack. If I want to clear the entire stack, however, I will press shift and then the escape key, which stands for clear. And everything in the stack has now been erased. The swap key is going to be the comma key in RPN mode. This is a very useful key. Say for example, I want to take four to the fifth power, but I enter five, enter four, enter. Well, I have the arguments in the wrong order. I need to swap them. So what I'm going to do is hit the comma key, and then I'm going to hit the power key. 4 to the 5th power is 1024, which I want. The swap key is very useful in chain calculations. If I want to negate whatever is on stack 1, all I have to do is press this change sign key which is symbolized by plus slash minus. It just instantly multiplies whatever is on stack one by negative one. To enter the mathematical constant pi, all I have to do is press the shift key and then the three key, and then press enter, and pi will be entered onto the stack. One argument operations. One argument operations only affect what is on the first stack. They include square and square root, sine, cosine, tangent, and their inverses, natural logarithm and the exponential function e to the x, common logarithm and the anti-log function 10 to the x, the absolute value function, which is the shift function of the chain sign key, and the reciprocal 
which is the shift of the division key. All these affect whatever is on the first stack only. For example, if I wanted to take the cosine of pi, I already have pi on the first level of the stack. All I have to do is press cosine, and there I get an answer of negative 1. Say I want to take 24 squared. I can enter 24, hit the enter key, then hit the square key to get an answer of 576. What if I want to take e to the 2.5 power? I can enter 2.5 and take the e to the x power, which is shift natural logarithm key, and get an answer of approximately 12.1825. Integer and fractional parts of a number and duplicating the first stack. For this next section, I cleared the stack and entered e to the second power three times. I'm going to take the fraction power of e squared. What I will do is select the toolbox, which looks like this treasure's chest. In the math submenu, I'm going to select the number submenu, the fractional part, which is option four, and it will turn the fractional part of the contents of the first stack. For the integer parts, the pathway is a little bit of the same, but you will select option three instead of option four. So let's demonstrate. I'm going to switch stacks one and two. Toolbox, numbers, integer part. Voila, there it is. One more thing of note. If you want to duplicate what's on stack one, when the number is entered, all you have to do is press the enter key. Do this as many times as needed. Probability, factorial, combination, and permutation. The factorial function is a one argument function. It will take the factorial of whatever is on the first stack level. So for example, five factorial, I will put five on the first level of the stack. Then I will hit two box, the math submenu, probability, option one factorial, and the factorial is calculated for me. This would be the same as me calculating five times four times three, times two, times one. The HP prime will accept any arguments for factorial. They don't have to be positive integers. So if I wanted to calculate the factorial of 4.88, I can do that. Which turns out to be approximately 97.91235. The next function I'm going to show you is the combination function, which will take two arguments. N is going to be on the second stack, and R is going to be on the first stack. Combinations returns the number of combinations without regard to order of N things taking R at a time. So if I had a stack of 52 playing cards, how many combinations of a hand of five cards can I get? To reach the combination function, we'll hit the toolbox, mouse submenu, probability submenu, option two, combination, which turns out to be 2,598,960. Permutations work the same way as combinations, except order of what is drawn is taken into consideration. It will take two arguments, so let's see how many permutations I can get from a deck of 52 playing cards if each hand is five cards. So I'm gonna enter 52, enter, five, enter. To get to permutations, I go to toolbox, math, probability, permutations, and I'm going to get the answer of 311,875,000 200. Modulus. Next up is the modulus function. 
if I was to divide two integers, the modulus function will return the remainder of that division. So, for example, if I would take 63 mod 13, I would put 63 and 13 on the stack. And then what I'll do is hit the toolbox, math submenu. This time I'm going to go into the arithmetic submenu and select modulus, which is option three. And I get an answer of 11. Normal distribution. Next, I'm going to be showing you some of the distribution functions. For this demonstration, I'll show you the normal distribution functions. We're going to assume that the mean is zero and deviation is equal to one. The normal CDF function is the lower tail area function. Basically, from negative infinity to whatever point you specify. So let's say I want to calculate the lower tail probability from negative infinity to two, cumulative distribution function. So I'll have the argument in stack one. Next, I'm going to press the toolbox key. I'm going to go in the math menu, probability. I'm going to choose option six, cumulative, option one, normal. Now note, you're going to see in the prompt normal LD underscore CDF, and it's going to ask for arguments. I'm going to use one argument, so I'm going to enter one. In RPN mode, certain functions or commands is going to ask you for the number of arguments to run the function. This is a little bit different from normal RPN calculators. So this one here tells me that I'm going to take the first stack to calculate the normal CDF cumulative distribution function. I'm set, so I'm going to press enter, and it's going to calculate the CDF from negative infinity to 2, not to 1. And I get the area of approximately 0.97725. We can do the inverse. So to do that, I'm going to hit the toolbox key, math menu, probability submenu, option seven for inverse, option one for normal. And just like the normal CDF function, I get prompted for the number of arguments. I'm going to hit one because I'm only going to take one argument, press enter, and I get the, the point right back. And there you have some of the basics of the HP Prime RPN mode. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. You can visit my blog at edspy31415.blogspot.com. Thank you.